Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video we're going to be going over BGP configuration. So here's specifically what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to enable BGP on a router, and then also how to bring up BGP neighbor relationships. Then you're going to learn about advertising networks to those neighbors, and then taking a look at the BGP table itself, as well as some best practices on implementing BGP in your environment or simply to be able to answer the appropriate test questions. So there's certain requirements that you need to know about when you enable BGP and that is you need an autonomous system number. You type in router BGP in that autonomous system number. That normally is a, is a number that is given to you or assigned to you. And then you need to know the IP address of each and every neighbor that you would like to communicate with. You would type in neighbor their, the IP address of the neighbor and whatever their the remote AS. So you need to enter in whatever their remote AS is. That's that's required. So here we see, for example, router BGP one. Our neighbor is 10.1.1.2. Remote AS is two. So for BGP neighbors, uh, there's certain requirements. Our AS must match our neighbors. AS as they point to us. So when they say I need to communicate with this neighbor, they need to make sure they get the AS right. The BGP router IDs of the two routers must not be the same. If there's configuration, obviously that needs to be configured correctly. And then each router must establish a TCP connection with its neighbors. Note the remote router IP address must match what the local router configures in a BGP neighbor remote AS command. So instead of talking about this, because that could get confusing, let's actually do it. Let's jump into the lab, and today we'll be working on the point to point between router two and router four. So here we want to enable BGP on router four, and we simply do that by typing router BGP, and let's say our autonomous system number is 10. Now we want to establish a neighbor relationship with router two to their serial interface. So then we type in neighbor, the IP address of our neighbor, and then the remote AS, and we'll say their remote AS is 10 as well. So this is an IBGP connection, which we will talk about later, but basically we're connecting two routers in the same AS, and there you see our neighbor is not up. We see it in our BGP table, but it's not up and active because we have not enabled it on router two. So on router two, we type router BGP 10, the neighbor, the IP address for uh, router four. And now we should see this neighbor relationship come up. And it may take a second here. There we go. So now the, the BGP neighbor relationship has come up between router two and router four simply by entering two commands on each router. We now have a valid BGP configuration. Now, when I show IP BGP, which shows the BGP table or show IP route, we don't see any BGP routes being shared because we're not inserting anything to BGP just yet. So how do you advertise networks? You can do it many ways. You can do it through propagation of received BGP routes that you're already receiving from someone else. You can redistribute routes into BGP. You can source the routes from your actual router and you can do that by using the network command, which would specify the exact network you would like to insert into BGP. And there needs to be a match for that in the local routing table. Or you can use the aggregate address command, which does what it says. It aggregates multiple routes into one larger route. So here's an example of the network command, router BGP autonomous system, and then the network 192.168.1.0 slash 24, we wanna advertise that route and that would do it. Now what is the BGP table? At a high level, the BGP table contains all learned BGP prefixes. So it takes all the learned, learned prefixes from all neighbors and then from there it chooses the best path from those options. And that is the route that it advertises to its neighbors. So let's take a look at some of these concepts. We're on router four now. And let's say we have got a route here that we were learning 10.10.30.0. We're learning that via 
EIGRP. But we want to advertise that into BGP, and we do that via the network command. So you can see 10.10.30 with a mask. Now we're going to insert that into BGP. That route we've learned via EIGRP is now going to be advertised via BGP from router 4 over to router 2. And we show IP BGP neighbor, the route, the neighbor IP address and the advertised route. And you can see that we are advertising this route. And router 2 will certainly show that they are receiving this route. Now on router 4, let's go ahead and redistribute connected routes. There's another way we can advertise routes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the routes we are now advertising over to router 2. And now you can see we are also now advertising connected routes. So those are just two ways you can advertise routes from um, a router via BGP. And as you can see, router 2 is now receiving all of those routes. And on router 2's routing table, you can see the BGP route marked by a B is now in the routing table. All the BGP routes are marked by the letter B. So let's go ahead and do a quick review of eBGP versus iBGP. Now let's say we have an autonomous system 200 and we own four routers and we connect them all via BGP. Being that they're all in the same autonomous system, we need a full mesh, that's a rule within iBGP. And these are again all iBGP connections because they're all connecting to the same autonomous system. But let's say we have two different providers, internet service providers. One is AS301, the other is AS450. These connections are each eBGP connections because we are connecting to autonomous systems that are not our own. So in AS200, we have full administrative control. That's iBGP between them. And then eBGP connections to our upstream providers where we do not have administrative control. Now, let's take this concept and actually implement it in the lab. So router three and router four are what we're gonna work on now. Now remember, we have an iBGP connection already between router four and router two. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna create a, an eBGP connection to router three. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a neighbor statement over to router three's interface, serial interface, and their remote AS is gonna be 999. That's gonna be our eBGP session over to router three. We're treating them like, uh, for example, an internet service provider. And now on router three, they need to do the same. Otherwise, the neighborship's not going to come up. So they do router BGP 999. They point back to us on the other side of the link. And they put in our remote AS. And they create their eBGP programming. And then this neighbor relationship will come up. and the neighbor relationship has come up between router three and router four. And now you see on router four, we have an iBGP session to router two and an eBGP session to router three, AS10 and AS999 respectively. Pretty straightforward concept, but now you know. So a few best practices in rolling out BGP. You should use a loopback address for neighborships. We've not been doing that yet. We've been using interfaces. And when you use loopbacks, you should manually set the router ID. And then you should also use eBGP multi-hop and update source loopback. BGP by default will not communicate to loopback addresses. You need to allow for multi-hop communications. Time to live with BGP is usually one. You need to increase it to higher than that. So I want to talk about some of these concepts. So let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and enable BGP in a typical way that you would do it. On router three, we're going to start from scratch here again and enable BGP on router three. And we're going to use loopback 99 on both router three and router four to set up our BGP neighbor session. 
Why loopbacks? Loopbacks are stable. They don't flap. They can be learned via multiple interfaces. Interfaces flap, but uh, loopbacks do not. So ideally, you're going to want to establish BGP between loopback addresses. So, and so we have the loopback addresses uh, with IP addresses. Then you also need to make sure you have an, a static route in place to make sure that you can reach the loopback on the other router. Since we're not advertising it via an IGP, we're just going to use static routes for that. And then we type in router BGP 10. We're going to manually set the BGP router ID to the loopback address, 10.30.30.1. And then our neighbor is going to be the loopback of router 4, 10.40.40.1. And then we are going to set uh, eBGP multi-hop to increase the time to live from 1. And let's increase it to 3. If it stays at one, this neighborship would never come up. We need to increase eBGP multi-hop uh, to three so the loopbacks can communicate. And then we're going to make our update source loopback 99. So all of these are really required to properly roll out BGP between loopbacks. And we'll do the same thing on router four. And we will soon see this neighbor relationship come up. And there we see that the neighbor relationship has now come up between the loopbacks. So we have a valid and stable neighbor relationship between router 3 and router 4. Now, let's go ahead and redistribute connected on router 3 and make sure that router 4 can actually see those routes. And we'll look at the BGP table. We don't see them yet. Often clearing BGP, clear IP BGP star soft is something that will reset the neighbor relationship and will allow for any changes you make to be implemented. And in that case, we now see that we've received the routes from router three. Finally, let's just do a quick review on BGP attributes. So let's say we have a web server and we are hosting it within our autonomous system. We have three routers connected via iBGP, and then we're connected to two different service providers using eBGP. And let's say we have users on the internet who are trying to get to our web server, and they see this as pretty much an often equal equal distance. So half of our traffic's coming over one link, half of our traffic's coming over the other link. Um, they're both, you know, we're AS50, and the way the users see it right now is that we're just a couple ASs away. Um, so we wanna make one path preferred. Let's say there's one circuit that we want to use more often than the other. We can add our AS over and over again and prepend it to what we advertise out to our provider, let's say on the top here. And then the provider on the top would see these multiple and implement these multiple um, AS um, additions to the attribute of the routes we send them. Users would no longer prefer that path. They would prefer the, the other path that had just one AS listed. But if that router went down, then the users would choose the less preferred path. Now, that's, an, that's a high level example of how you can manipulate uh, AS path, but let's do it. Let's do a route map AS path. And then, and we're on router three here, by the way. And what we wanna do is we're gonna say in this route map, we're just gonna set the AS path 
and we're going to prepend is the proper word. We're going to prepend and we're going to keep adding RAS over and over again. And we're going to prepend it to our advertisements out to router four. And then router four, as you can see right now, the path is just one instance of an AS. Well, we're going to change that with this prepending. We're going to apply this route map to our neighbor relationship to router four. And we're going to place it outbound. So any outbound advertisement we give router four will have a prepend of these AS numbers. We're going to clear the BGP session. And then now look at router four, all of these additional AS numbers, which makes the path less preferred. That's just one of many ways you can manipulate BGP attributes to affect routing. So here's what you've learned. You've learned basic BGP configuration. You've learned how to enable it and turn up neighborships in BGP. You've learned how to advertise networks in BGP and how to take a look at the BGP table at a high level. You've learned best practices with BGP using loopbacks. And then you've also looked at the BGP attributes and how to manipulate those as well. Good luck in your studies.